To say that wetlands historically have been underappreciated would be an understatement. Farmers and ranchers have long thought of bogs, marshes, and swamps as wasted land. And that belief has led to the draining of more than 100 million acres, or over 50% of America's wetlands. Recently, there has been a growing awareness that there is value in wetlands for their ability to filter pollutants, reduce erosion, and prevent flooding. However, changing perceptions can be a challenge. I have one of the farmers tell me that, you know, someday, Ron, you're going to want potatoes on your National Wildlife Refuge. And I, I said, I, you know, that, that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure about that. You know, I'm not sure Ron that Cole that. manages the Klamath Basin National Wildlife Refuges. He also serves as the project leader for Walking Wetlands, a unique crop rotation program that marries agricultural land with wetlands. And I told him, not sure about wanting to put potatoes on it, but I know someday you're going to want a wetland on your farm. And there was a chuckle. And that same individual um, is now a big proponent of putting wetlands on, on, uh, on farm ground and has one on his own farm today. And is very proud of it because it's working for his operation. In the battle over water rights and land use in California and Oregon, the Klamath Water Basin has long been the tip of the spear. We will stand with the last farmer till the last farmer stands. Thank you. In 2001, agriculture was pitted against endangered suckerfish and salmon interests when the federal government denied farmers access to water needed to irrigate fields. 20,000 people gathered in Klamath Falls to protest the decision. The demonstrators formed a bucket brigade, took water from Klamath Lake, and dumped it into an irrigation canal. The gesture was symbolic, but it drew national attention to the century-old dispute of how water is used in the basin. Prior to the 1900s, the Klamath Basin was made up of more than 180,000 acres of shallow lakes and wetlands, making it one of the largest and most important feeding and breeding grounds for waterfowl that migrate along the Pacific Flyway. Despite the ecosystem's intrinsic value, the federal government in 1905 initiated the Klamath Reclamation Project. The goal of the project was to drain wetlands and build canals for irrigation beneath the Lower Klamath and Thule Lake in order to create farmland and encourage homesteading. Three years later, President Theodore Roosevelt recognized the importance of the wetlands and created the nation's first waterfowl refuge on the Lower Klamath. Since then, the basin has become a patchwork of reclamation and preservation projects, which have resulted in numerous court battles between agriculturalists and preservationists. We were busy fighting each other, fighting each other about water, about pesticides, about a host of issues. And while you're in those battles and your lawyers are talking to their lawyers, you're not negotiating, you're not talking about things that you mutually agree upon. You're completely focused on where you disagree. Dave Mauser is a wildlife biologist at the Klamath Basin Wildlife Refuges. Since the refuges contain land leased for farming, Mauser, along with refuges manager Ron Cole, developed the idea of draining wetlands to create farmland and flooding farmland to create wetlands. They felt walking wetlands could benefit both farming and wildlife and be the common ground on which both preservationist and agriculturalist could stand. So far, the benefits have been greater than anticipated. And we've had the university come out and do a replicated uh, yield trial in three different spots. And we hit these uh, incredible <laughs> 35 ton yield in one spot, 30 ton yield in another. Typical yield was 25 ton or 500 sacks, we call it. Uh, and so uh, potatoes. And so here we have this great big potato crop and a great big grain crop in the two years after wetlands. And that kind of Marshall Staunton's family was the first in the basin to take part in the Walking Wetlands program. What they found was not only a 25% increase in yields, but also a decrease in their use of fertilizer and pesticides. Prior to the Walking Wetlands program, growing potatoes in the basin without fumigating for nematodes was impossible. But Staunton found that a former wetland can be farmed without inputs for a few years, and that has allowed him to produce a portion of his crops organically. 
But if, if you aren't in organic and you want to go conventional, you've got those cost savings and yield increases. With yields up as much as 25%, a reduction in input costs, and the ability to command a higher price by marketing organic produce, the cost of leasing land coming out of a wetland rotation is 75 to 100% higher than other land in the refuge. The benefits realized in the Walking Wetlands program have farmers like Rob Crawford preparing their private lands for wetland rotations. A year ago, this is where Crawford planted his crops. Today, the same land is underwater. That's the amazing thing to stand here today and to realize that was red wheat, a spring red wheat crop last year and that this spring was the first application of water and just to watch that quick realization of benefit for the wildlife. Crawford worked with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to build the levees that surround his field. In return for taking his own land out of production, the government allows him to farm within the refuge. And for Crawford, that's a win-win situation. People need to, to get back to the to understand the value of fertile lands. And at the same time, if you can do something that is beneficial for wildlife and still make your lands more fertile and economically justify what you're doing, that's a good strategy. In addition to its agricultural benefits, the Walking Wetland Program has had a huge impact on refuges within the basin. While less than 25% of the Klamath's historic wetlands exist today, the Walking Wetlands program has added nearly 4,000 acres of additional wetlands. That in turn has prompted a 50 to 75% increase in waterfowl. Because farmers are using less fertilizer and pesticides, water quality has improved, benefiting wildlife not only within the basin, but downstream as well. And, there is also the benefit of increased revenues from farmers who are willing to pay more for land leased within the refuge. It, you know, we call it walking wetlands, and they were taking some tiny steps to start with, but the legs are getting pretty strong, and they're moving pretty fast now, and I love it. I like where it's going. I like the stride it's taken. For Market to Market, I'm Andrew Bott.